Hello guys and welcome back to my channel. Today in this video I'm going to build and fly a DJI HD version of the Acrobrat 3-inch quadcopter which I've previously built and reviewed. As for components, I'm using the Fly Wuning 1404 4850 kV motors, Emax Avant 3-inch propellers, the iFlight 6XD Twin G F7 mini stack which is specially designed for the DJI Air Unit, a Crossfire Nano SE receiver, the DJI Air Unit, the Fierce FPV Air LXCP antennas, and of course the Acrobat frame. The weight of this build without a battery is 194 grams, and including this tattoo 850 mAh for its battery, which is the one that I used when flying this quadcopter, the total weight is 296.6 grams. In terms of flight time, you can expect between 2 to 3.5 minutes, depending on how aggressive you're going to get on the throttle, and when flying on a more cinematic style, I got close to 3.5 minutes, and when pushing the throttle and also really killing this battery, I got close to 2 minutes. In terms of build, assembling this quadcopter was really easy, and using the iFlight Success D stack, which is specially designed for the DJI unit, definitely keeps it simple. The hardest part when building this quadcopter was actually trying to fit these DJI antennas inside the 3D printed TPU mount which I got from a friend, and eventually I gave up and used the Fierce FPV Air LXCP antennas. I had to trim the 3D printed TPU mount, and as you can see this orientation is not ideal, however I think that after testing this quadcopter, the performance of the antennas was pretty good. Regarding the iFlex XXD Twin G F7 mini stack, as I mentioned before, it makes the build procedure really simple, and I didn't experience any issues when using this stack. You should note however that on the user manual it states that the voltage meter battery scale should be 110 and in my experience the actual value should be 111. In addition, initially I used the default PID settings and after the first flight I had lots of vibrations and lowering the master multiplier and PND gain values really helped. So now here you can see on the left side the takeoff using the default PID values and now on the right side the takeoff after adjusting them. So overall I can tell you that I'm pretty pleased with both building and flying this quadcopter and I'm going to wrap up this video by showing you photos from the build procedure and of course with some flight footage. As always I thank you for watching my video, I hope you enjoyed it and you find it useful. If you have any questions feel free to ask them in the comments section down below. Don't forget to leave a thumbs up if you like this video and consider subscribing to my channel and hitting the notifications bell if you're not already subscribed. See you in my next videos and goodbye.